So if you were using YouTube about four years ago, then you've definitely heard of a YouTuber named K. I think most of you probably know him by the name Phase K. And Phase K has done content on YouTube for years, but he's probably most known for his Fortnite content. I mean, some of these videos were getting millions and millions of views, and he was definitely one of the biggest content creators on YouTube at one point. But now, people rarely talk about him. And if you want to know why that is, be sure to subscribe to the channel because we are on the road to 1,000 subscribers. And also be sure to press the very first link in my description to join my Discord server and become an official member of the community. And with all of that being said, let's get into how this YouTuber ruined his own career. So K joined YouTube on January 7th, 2012, and he will post his very first video on that day titled K Minitage number 17. Now, obviously this couldn't have been his very first video because it was the 17th montage that he had made. And like most gamers on YouTube at the time, K started off posting Call of Duty content that ranged anywhere from montages to clips to just gameplay in general. And for the next three years, all K continued to do was post Call of Duty content. He joined a number of clans like Optic, Soar, and even the one he's most known for today, FaZe. As you all know, anybody that was playing Call of Duty back in 2012, 2013, everybody was trick shotting and sniping, hoping they could one day join the clan like FaZe or Optic. And K ended up joining not one, but both. But as we all know, as time started passing, Call of Duty really started dying. And with Call of Duty being on a decline, K needed another form of content to post quickly. So what was the next best thing on YouTube at the time? Pranks. So on June 27th, 2015, K will upload his first prank on YouTube, which was titled Smack Cam Prank on My Little Brother. Now K's little brother is also a YouTuber now himself, and is someone that you all probably know very well, but we'll get into that a little later in the video. But after posting this video, he didn't completely just shy away from Call of Duty. He still continued to mix up his content a little bit, but he definitely started getting more comfortable doing like IRL style content. Because after this, he uploaded videos like Q&As, vlog style videos, and of course, more pranks. And for the next few months after that, FaZe K just went back to doing his regular Call of Duty content, doing trick shotting and quick scoping and things like that. Up until the point where a new trend started on YouTube at the time, which was challenges. FaZe K did different challenges throughout his YouTube journey, but the ones he started with included videos like Massive McDonald's Burger Challenge, a Soda Taste Test Challenge, and the Spiciest Hot Wings Ever Challenge. And over the span of the next four years after that, Phase K stayed very consistent on YouTube, kept up with all the trends, and slowly just started taking his channel to the next level with IRL style content. But in 2018, like many other creators, Phase K's career would completely change. Phase K had returned to his old gaming ways. A new game at the time was blowing up by the name of Fortnite. Now I'm pretty sure all of us know what Fortnite did for the entire gaming community but this game will lead to a massive jump in success for FaZe K. During this time, K uploaded a lot of viral videos that would accumulate millions and millions of views. And some of these videos included videos like Fortnite Zone Wars with the FaZe House, 8 year old versus an 11 year old Fortnite 1v1, I paid Fortnite Pros to have 1v1 challenge, and a lot of other viral videos, including his little brother who we talked about earlier, FaZe Jarvis. I mean, these videos were legit bangers. And his little brother Jarvis really played a key role in his YouTube career. Just look back to what I said earlier, K's first ever IRL video was about him doing a smack prank on Jarvis. Alright, here we go. I heard this to my brother. Oh, oh my god, you're so You're so gay. You're so You fast forward about five years after all of that, and him and Jarvis are doing all of these types of challenges together that's generating millions of views. And I'm pretty sure we all know with all the success that Jarvis and Kay was getting, even Jarvis ended up joining FaZe himself. But Jarvis' success story is a video for another day. What could cause someone to go from having millions of views on their videos, gaining millions of supporters, 
and being in one of the biggest gaming organizations that there is. How could this just all go away in the blink of an eye? Well, I'm pretty sure one of the types of people that the average person probably hates the most is a scammer. And in the summer of 2021, Phase K, along with a few other Phase members, would make the biggest mistake of their careers. But K would end up getting it the worst. You see, Phase Nikon, Phase Tico, Phase Jarvis, and Phase K were allegedly heavily involved with a pump and dump crypto scheme that caused a lot of their supporters to lose a lot of money. Now, if you don't know what a pump and dump crypto scheme is, to sum it up without boring you to death, it's basically when a person finds something that has basically almost zero value and buys a lot of it when it's completely worthless. And that person who in most cases has a lot of influence, fans, clout, publicity, whatever, which in this case, all four of these phase members did, you go around telling people, hey, you guys should do this, you guys should buy this, you guys should go invest in this, telling them to go put money into what you just found that was completely worthless. And once you get a lot of people putting money into something, spending their money on something, it suddenly doesn't become worthless anymore. And since you were one of the first people with it, obviously you have the most of it. But after people started buying this cryptocurrency that they were promoting, it got all the way up to the value of a US penny. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a lot. Just imagine if you had like 10 million pennies and you got those 10 million pennies for like the price of 1,000 pennies. Obviously, those aren't exact numbers, but you get what I'm trying to say. So once this cryptocurrency got up to the price of one penny, it suddenly completely crashed and nosedived all the way back to one tenth of a penny. The four phase members managed to pump this cryptocurrency up about 500%. And in the middle of one night, while everybody was asleep, the price of this crypto suddenly nosedived back to their original value, crashing literally back down to nothing. And with the value of the crypto dropping so much overnight, people woke up to a lot of money being gone from their accounts. They didn't know what had happened. And when they went to check in with these phase members tweets who were promoting it, all of the tweets on all of these phase member pages were suddenly deleted. I mean, they were gone. Nobody made a tweet about it nothing and you may be wondering well how did these phase members even manage to pull this off how did they get so many people to go buy a random cryptocurrency and manage to pump the value of the crypto up 500 percent well i'll tell you how this cryptocurrency in question was named save the kids my name's Frazier. My name's Jarvis. I'm Tico. I'm Ryska. I'm Nikon. And I support Save the Kids Token. 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 And this cryptocurrency was believed to be some form of charity token. They claimed to be putting the wealth back in the pockets of its holders while still helping out children in need and things like that. So of course a bunch of people would believe their favorite creators when they told them yeah go buy this and you'll help out a bunch of families in need and you can make money from it like who doesn't want to help people out and make money it sounds like something that's almost too good to be true and it literally was and once people started putting two and two together about what happened to their money and the truth about this cryptocurrency the creators involved and phase clan started facing a lot of backlash because not only were these four to blame for all of this, just them being in phase alone put the entire phase at fault and in jeopardy. And allegedly, nobody else in phase had any idea this was even going on. So in order to get some of the heat off of them, they indefinitely suspended the four members involved. Now Jarvis, Tico, and Nikon all ended up being reinstated eventually, but phase K ended up being completely kicked out of the organization. Now, even one of the owners and creators of FaZe, FaZe Banks, said that he had no idea any of this was happening. And he even said that the four members involved could have been facing major legal trouble for charges like money laundering and charity fraud. And I guess once Case started hearing words like legal trouble and jail and prison and fraud and all of these big dangerous words that can land somebody a lot of time in prison, he decided to launch his own investigation on the Save the Kids crypto scam. K allegedly said that he didn't know what happened himself. K himself hired his own legal team to conduct a quote unquote independent, aggressive, and very thorough legal investigation to find out what really happened. And K even stated in his video that they found a significant amount of evidence that a dishonest person abused his trust with him 
to scam everyone. Faye's case stated that the person gained his trust and the trust of his friends while still encouraging them to be public faces of his scheme. He then abused that trust to alter the code right before launch, resulting in him getting six-figure profits and the rest of us to be blamed. And he even urged fans that invested in the coin to come out and share their stories to help authorities get all the evidence they needed to take proper action. He said the only way that he could pay forward the support is to get the man that scammed him and everyone else the justice that he deserves. So basically, he didn't really want to take any heat for any of this. Instead, he tried to say that there was really another person behind all of this that scammed them as well as everyone else. But in the eyes of the public, his reputation was already completely ruined. The other three like Nikon, Tico, and Jarvis were able to recover from this and continue forward with their careers and even continue having more success. But K on the other hand, not so much. After the 27 minute video explaining what happened, he uploaded a video titled Goodbye Phase K, A New Beginning. And for the next year, he would just continue making videos with his brother involving his girlfriend and other girls. This was still working somewhat well for him, but he was still receiving a lot of hate and the view count was significantly different than what it was before. And this would eventually lead to K becoming very inconsistent on YouTube. I mean, if you go to his channel now, his most recent video was posted one month ago, and that was also about his brother Jarvis playing OG Fortnite, which I don't really think counts because I think every Fortnite YouTuber literally came back for OG Fortnite. Now we're talking about a person who was consistent on YouTube for 11 years straight. I mean, the man has 1.8 thousand videos uploaded on his channel. He was never inconsistent at all, but as a result of everything that happened, it seemed he just couldn't get back to himself and started doing a lot of different style content and now he seems to only post long form content when there's something going on with either his brother or FaZe Clan. The only thing FaZe K is really consistent with now is short form content and most of that is just very cringe content that's really just used to market his girlfriend's OnlyFans and it doesn't really seem like the K that we all remembered prior to that whole crypto incident. As of right now, it doesn't seem like K has any form of strong intention to return back to making long form videos like he once was. And now my question for you guys is, why do you think this is? Why do you think that Phase K became so inconsistent and seemed to just completely give up with his YouTube career? Do you guys think that he got the money now and just stopped caring? Or do you just think it's because of all the backlash and hate he's been receiving? Or maybe he's just mentally tired of it all and just seems to be in a content drought after being consistent for 11 years. Let me know what you personally think in the comments down below. And with all of that being said, be sure to smash that subscribe button to join the trappers with the biggest trapper because we are on the road to 1,000 subscribers. Y'all been going crazy, bro, like for real, and I appreciate that. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't enjoy it, give me a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback to me. And as always, I appreciate all the love and support. And I catch y'all boys and girls in the next banger, man. Bye, have a beautiful time.